Hi, this is Arjun from Mystic Alankar and in this video we're going to talk about sidechain compression and how you can use it in your music. Well, in sidechain compression what you're doing is you're just using information from another track to trigger the compressor. So like in EDM and pop records we usually sidechain the synth elements to the kick. This is what creates that bumping kind of effect which we're pretty used to hearing. So over here I've layered a couple of elements to demonstrate how it works. So without further ado let's get started. The sidechain compression is active right now, so I'll just mute it and let's take a listen. So as you can hear, you don't hear any kind of movement or any kind of pumping. So I'll just switch this on right now and you'll be able to hear the difference. So what exactly is going on here? Let's open this compressor and see the settings. The attack and release settings essentially control the reaction speed of a compressor. In other words, like a slower attack means it takes more time for the compressor to get activated and a faster attack means it takes less time for the compressor to start working. So that's exactly the same as any normal compressor, right? So the only difference here is that we're side chaining or taking audio from another track. In this case, we're taking audio from kick one. So that's what is selected here. You could select any track here and you could use that to trigger the compressor. So let me just delete this compressor and we can start fresh. So I just open a compressor here and I select the sidechain input and then I tweak the ratio threshold attack and release and that's it. Notice how it works even though the kick track is muted. But anyway, you can get the pumping effect to be subtle or in your face by tweaking the compressor settings. So that's what we're going to look at right now. A very fast attack will trigger the compressor as soon as the kick plays and a very fast release will deactivate the compressor as soon as the kick ends. So you can use this setting if you want to make your kick sound more punchy and more prominent in your mix so that it cuts through more while still maintaining a strong low end. So very fast attack would be as fast as you can make it. Very fast release would be again as fast as you can make it. And when it comes to the ratio and threshold, if you want the pumping to be very obvious, you can set a high ratio like above 10 is to 1 and you can even go all the way up to as high as you want. Like I wouldn't mind doing 30 is to 1 for this. On the other hand, if you want it to be more subtle, then you set a lower ratio. So let's hear how this is affecting the track. So it's as simple as that. And now if we were to tweak these settings, you'd see what exactly happens. Suppose I increase the attack time. So in this kind of a scenario where the release is very long, you can see that the signal is always in the compressor and that's something that you don't want because then you don't get the pumping and you just have over compression in this case. So if you're looking for the pumping effect, you want to have a fast attack, fast release and high ratio. And then after that you want to adjust the threshold in a way that prevents the signal from being in the compressor all the time. So what I mean by that is that you want to look at your meter and find the sweet spot for where to adjust your threshold so that the meter keeps hitting zero indicating that the signal is not in the compressor all the time. So when you're happy with the sound, that's it. You can just paste this setting on other tracks and duplicate it and then, you know, make some minor tweaks in case if you need to and you're done. So now I've pasted the same compressor settings on all these tracks. Not the percussions though, just the synth elements. And let's hear how that sounds. Now, you also have other ways in which you can tweak the sound so that you get a different kind of a pumping effect. If you're not happy with this sound, you can always make a few tweaks. One way is to tweak the tone of the kick. For example, let's pull up an EQ and EQ out some of the low end and see what happens. So 
So you can hear that you're losing that pumping effect because this is what is triggering the compressor. So if this sound is changed, then obviously the compression will sound different. So you could have different kinds of things happening over here. You could make different kinds of graphs on this EQ and that would change the sound of the sidechain compression. That's one way to tweak the sound. Another way is to change the kick sample altogether. Like say I was going back to this chords track. Right now you know it's being triggered by kick 1. So let's see what happens if we change the trigger to kick 2 or kick 3 or kick 4 and see like how that affects the sound. In case if you notice any clicky sounds, they'll go away by tweaking the parameters on your compressor or you can add a fade in and fade out on your kick sample and that should do the trick. Now that you can hear that by changing the kick sample for your sidechain compression, the sound changes quite a bit. So that's why many producers like to use a different sample for the sidechain compression and a different sample for the kick that you actually hear in the track. And if you notice here, we've done the same thing too. Kick 1 is used to trigger the sidechain compression, while kick 5 is what you actually hear in the track. So although you don't have to do that, you could do that if you feel like you want to have a different vibe on the sidechain compression versus a different vibe for the track for the kick which you actually hear. But anyway, that's left to personal taste and preference. So in summary, if you want that pumping effect to be very obvious, very prominent, then you want to have a fast attack fast release and high ratio and then set the threshold so that the meter keeps going in and out of the compressor. The meter keeps showing that it's in the compressor while the kick is on. As soon as the kick ends, it's out of the compressor. So that's what you want to have for a really good pumping effect. And if you want it to be more subtle, more smooth, then you can always tweak the attack and release settings. So if you're having this clicky sound or something which you don't like, then just by changing the attack and release, most of the time that click sound will go away. But if you're really happy with your attack and release settings, then you just want to add a small fade in or fade out to the sample and that should do the trick. So that's all we have for this video. All the synth sounds used in this project are from Ace Volume 1, a preset pack for X for Serum. So you can get that by clicking on the link in the description. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.